Uh, <coughs> hello class. Uh, so today we will be uh, delving deeper into like textual, um, how, how the text uh, motivates the composer to uh, create uh, the music the way that he does. How the composer is inspired by the music. Um, and I have three volunteers, two English speakers and one Spanish speaker. Okay, Morgan, you'll be the first. You'll be the second English speaker. And Espanol? <laughs> okay, Jessica. Thank you, Jessica. Okay. Uh, can I have everybody? Um, take out this. Uh, take out this uh, handout. And so, my first speaker, you'll be reading the top. The words on the top left, and my, uh, my Spanish speaker, you'll be reading the words on the top right, and my second English speaker, you will be reading the words and the definitions at the bottom. And we will be working in that order. Um, just go straight across, uh, and I will try my best to describe and help you figure out, find these different tools that we're going to um, work on today. Uh, so Morgan, can I have you read off the first one? Word painting. Pintura de palabras. Word painting is a way innovative of word painting is a way innovative of manipulating the elements of music to reflect a feeling inspired by a word or phrases in musical text. <coughs> Composers use this method as an attempt to understand through experience. Yes. Okay, and what I mean by that is well, here's an example of this. How would you pronounce the word UP? Anybody? Uh, oh. Okay, now how would you pronounce the word D O W N? No. 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 Didn't you notice that when you said the word up, your voice went up? And then when you said down, your voice went down. Dang. In the same way, uh, composers use words like this to. Um, to, pr to give them some direction as far as where they're going to go with the music. Uh, in the piece that we're going to be looking at, um, you will there will be some examples of this, and I will have you look at look at them later. Can I have uh, Morgan? Can you read <coughs> out the second word? Modulation. Modulation. Modulation is a transition from one key signature to another. This element of music would be used to enhance, refresh an idea, as well as an occasion transition to a new idea. Okay, so the way to find modulation is usually uh, identified by repeated accidentals uh, over a period of time in the music. Um, during this piece, there will be four different modulations. I think there are four. Four different modulations to different keys. And I hope you can find all of them. Uh, the next, uh, can I have you read this? The third one. Dissonance. <laughs> Dissonance. Dissonance occurs when more than one pinch clashes to create musical tension as a way of reflecting a mood or to provide an effect in music. Composers use this <coughs> to create drama or to prolong a feeling of discomfort. Yes. Yeah. Um, so the easiest the easiest forms of dissonance are um, are intervals of seconds. So, for example, Do and Re they sound fine separately, but when you play them together, oh, it's a little bit jar. Or the, if you go just a half step, say Tito, uh, it still sounds like a, it, it sounds like it's resolving. But if you play them together again, it sounds. Like it's very discomforting. So composers use this to, um, to uh, yes, prolong an idea that they had, or to like embellish something that they wanted, and to and then to eventually resolve to a more consonant uh, being in music. Can I have you read the final one? Modal changes. Cambios modales. Modal changes would be used to change the feeling portrayed in music to fit the needs of text or to add drama. Usually, the major mode is used to portray happiness 
and the minor mode would be used to portray sadness or discomfort. Yes. <laughs> well, that one was pretty straightforward. Um, uh, it is also uh, identified by different accidentals in the music, but it's more it's more identified by a feeling that you that you receive from the from what you're hearing. Okay, so can I have everybody now take out either this form or this form? Okay, so uh, I'm going to count you off uh, one to four, and I'm going to have you guys sit in in different groups. Can I have you go to your different groups? And I'm actually going to do uh, four. Actually, so I'll have one here, two here, three here, and this one. Four. So just this one. Three. Two. 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 Well, different uh, words that you might think would be important. Uh, and I want you to identify those by underlining them. Does everyone have a pencil? Yes. So I'm going to give you like a couple of minutes to work on that. So you're going to un underline the words that you think are important to um, to Yes, do it in Spanish. Do it in Spanish if you if you need to. Three important words. Oh, forget
Okay, just one. So I see some really good ideas going up on this board. Uh, who was the person who wrote down the word crowns? Why did you choose that word? Because <laughs> Tim said it was his favorite. Oh. Why, did, why is it your favorite, Tim? It's my favorite because uh, it's a really, really good choice of, like, you could just say, like, there's snow on the rooftops, you know? But, like, no. They're, like, ornamented with a crowning of snow on the rooftops. <laughs> Great. And why do you think, that, why do you think, uh, why do you think, what do you think the composer could have done with that word? Uh, prolonged it. Like, not a chord. Though. That's beautiful. Like, a dotted pattern. Like, maybe, like, an, a, a, a chord that just sustains for a period of time? Could have done that, yes. Okay, or great. Or by a shiny cord. And, uh, <laughs> I see the word rest. Who chose that one? I thought it was rest. Okay, why did you choose that one? Because I, because okay. um, it's like the comic came after that, and it didn't have to come after that. So what kind of ideas come to you when you think about rest? Sleep. Sleep? Okay. Silence. But like, if you were to like put it into music, how would it how would it look to you? Like, like a rest, I guess. Okay, you know, perfect. Or... So like silence. Sure, yeah, that. <coughs> uh, okay, so now that we've done that, uh, I would like you to listen to the music, and I want you to see if if uh, the thing the choices that you made with your important words uh, were. Were things that the composer elaborated on ornamenting, uh, ornamentally. And, uh, as you pass out your music. Uh, ornamentation. Ornamentation. Yes. Here you are. So, you're going to look through it together uh, and try to find the different uh, ways that the, the teacher, uh, I mean, the, the composer used word painting. Modulation, distance, and mode changes. And
did he use any dynamic things to um, enhance it or to like make it more yeah, uh, fit the work? Yeah, Windows, Forte Pianos. Yes. So reiterations and Forte Pianos to like make it more Dramatic. like dreamlike. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so just uh, checking, what were the terms that we went over today? Word painting, modulation, distance, modal changes, and the word of the Calabras. Relaxation. Thank you so much. And uh, how would you find uh, how would you find dissonance? No, it's great. It's okay. Uh, and word painting, how do we find, how do we describe word painting, or how do we find it in our music? Yes. We can look for words that are descriptive and then uh, see if the composer has used those words musically. Great. Okay, so uh, starting tomorrow, we will actually start going through this piece and uh, we will start to learn it. Thank you, everyone.